It's Chris Watkin back again with James Dearsley, prop tech guru and commentator. Your, your, your introductions are getting more sort of, what can I say, um, extravagant wow. as we go. And the gift that keeps giving James. <laughs> uh, James, you go all around the world. You talk to estate agents, real estate agents around, uh, around the globe. Um, how would you compare UK estate agency to different other markets in the world? Talk to me, good and bad. Oh, good and bad. Um, I think it's a really difficult question because obviously every single country is a slightly different model. And um, the, the one thing I would say bad, um, I, I'm going to say it's bad across the board, really, is I don't think we are helped um, politically at all. Uh, I think a lot of the challenges that we face as an industry moving forward are going to be helped by the government coming in and actually getting involved and actually having some stability in what the hell our housing ministry is actually starting to put out. Um, they're starting to make some quite good gains and you know, certainly around the new build sector and planning is very good, but really there needs to be a serious amount of work and that will help everybody. Oh, is that regulation? Yeah, totally, 100%. Um, but that is universal. Um, okay. I, I think in terms of uh, estate agency, for me, the most important thing to realise is what I don't think we do enough is look outside of the UK industry at what other um, countries are doing. Um, and, and, I, and I think any, any decent estate agent should really, I, I know you're a big advocate of, of the US market, for example. Um, I, I Australia like particularly. Oh, Australia as well, mm -hmm. yeah. Or well, getting ideas, you know, abroad people tend to charge, okay, you, there's a lot of buyer's agents and the, the fee has to be split, but fundamentally they're being charged 5-6% for yeah. both. I know we don't do buyer agents in the UK, which again is another story. Another. Well, well, I mean, and maybe we should. I mean, I'm, I'm a big advocate of, of, of pushing commissions a, an awful lot higher than where they are at the minute. And that is going to be a gradual transition over probably 10 to 20 years because we've made a rod for our own back with ridiculous commission levels. And that's going to be contentious in its own right, I know. But you've only got to look at the US models, the Australian models in particular, as you quite rightly say, to understand. But they have different broker-led organisations. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't look at them and we shouldn't learn from the way that they market, from the way that they advertise, from the way that they run their organisations. Because as we transition as, a, as an industry, we need to understand the successes and the failures of others. And if we look at the su success and failure of our own UK system, it's ridiculous. We're, we're talking to the same people about the same things and it doesn't work. You have to learn from, from others. Um, I particularly like the seller and the buyer model of, of paying commission. You see it across Europe like you wouldn't believe. Um, you see a much more personalised service in like, places like Spain and Italy where you know that notion of my estate agent is absolutely true. Um, in they, Holland, they get, Germany, past, they get passed around the family, don't they? Oh, I mean, ridiculously. The family and friends and, and all that sort of stuff. So they run a very personalised service. Um, Holland and and, uh, and Germany, I think they they also run um, actually more similar to the way that we work. But um, again, they have buy and sell commissions on, on both sides. Um, South Americans a little bit more like um, the Spanish and the Italians in terms of that ultra personal service. But even over there, they're starting to bring in um, the sort of the, you know the purple brick style uh, model into into South America in Argentina actually in particular to great success I might add. Mm -hmm. But in those markets, it's because the commission is much higher and these guys are undercutting it in a very, very big way. But the, the really simple message to every single estate agent I would have out there, and that, that is a negotiator of value to you know, top end C-suite, is you have to learn from other markets in order to influence your own. Don't expect to learn from the next estate agent or move to another estate agent to learn. You have to look outside. Well, I mean, to be frank with you, they probably don't even do training themselves, do they? No, I don't. I find it fascinating that no no estate agent watching this can can get past five or six estate agency trainers to, be, to go between fifteen thousand estate agents. Mm. We don't even train our ourselves or our staff, let alone getting uh, ideas from around the, the, the globe. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I mean, I, I it's just a little little story, but I mean, it's, I don't know how relevant it is. But I remember my first week of training at Foxton's when I when I joined them as a graduate. I spent one week learning how to fill out an applicant card. Let's go bang way way back, but I will never forget that training because I was the expert of filling in applicant cards. But you know they had a rigorous training process, a program then put in place by a massive training team, 
I still don't think there's anybody that really does training and looks outside to bring in the skills that are needed to look at the next 10 to 25 years of estate agency. And that's key. Don't train for today. You have to train for tomorrow. Thank you for your time today. That's all right.